market master of the day is Mahesh Patil, Chief Investment Officer at Aditya Birla Sun Life Asset Management Companies here in our studios. Mahesh, great to have you with us here. Thank yeah, you for morning. your time. I have to start with HDFC Bank. Uh, it's, the, it's a fun favorite, uh, institutional uh, favorite name. I've seen a lot of price damage over the last two days. Is it a buy here? Yeah, I mean, we can't talk stock specific, but really if you look at uh, in the banking sector itself, I think uh, what the numbers have come in suggests that there has been some pressure on the uh, on the deposit side, right? Because of the tight liquidity conditions which have been there. So your credit growth, I mean, demand has been fairly strong, both on retail and also we've seen some pickup on the corporate side. And But deposit growth has, has been lagging behind. And obviously there is some pressure because, I mean, uh, on the loan to the LD ratios, uh, where the banks, uh, the ratio is, because in the last few quarters, banks have dipped into the liquidity reserves to really cater for that credit. And with RB also now kind of, not exactly cautioning, but trying to see that, okay, uh, the LDR ratio is within a particular frame. We are seeing some uh, pressure uh, on, on the banks in terms of uh, the margins. Mm -hmm. And that is what is reflected. I think, uh, clearly, I think the banks uh, will have to really step up on their liability side. And, and you could see some increase in terms of deposit rates uh, going up. Uh, but I think overall, the banking sector, I think the uh, outlook is still fairly decent. I mean, in terms of the credit growth, if you're looking at has been uh, fairly good. In fact, it's a uh, surprise for this fiscal year itself. And and with the overall uh, investment cycle picking up, uh, we would expect the corporate credit growth also start to pick up, which has been kind of sluggish for the last uh, three years or so. And, and overall Mahesh, asset, Without, without yeah. going into whether buyers buying or selling yes. HFC, and I understand your constraints. What's the yeah. house view though? With, it's not a recommendation, but sure. just because I mean, it's a 20% on a name like HDFC in two days. That's significant, right? Yeah. So just give us the, I'm sure you've had discussions internally. What was the problem and uh, what what's the way forward in your opinion? Not Nothing to do with the stock. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, I mean, it's a question about the whole sector. I think one is the over ownership, right? Because See, I mean, uh, one is, if you look at the IT sector, right, any slight change in terms of guidance, okay, uh, you see a sharp reaction. And the similar thing is happening in some of these stocks, right, where uh, A, the FI ownership is fairly large, and we've seen that, uh, and, and as a result of that, uh, any slight disappointment, I think the market reaction is much more violent. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the reasons why we've seen the sharp moves in uh, wherever FI ownership has been significantly higher. And, and and apart from that, I think uh, overall the sector itself, uh, because a large weightage in the benchmark is a large ownership. So uh, that's a sector where which normally comes under pressure if there is a slight disappointment. Mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> otherwise, I think from a purely from a valuation standpoint, if you look at it, the sector is one of the few sectors where uh, there is some amount of comfort okay, in terms of the long-term averages. So I don't think that is an issue over here. It's also in terms of how companies are able to guide mm -hmm. because quarterly results and what's the kind of a guidance they give and confidence to investors that uh, the outlook is good. I think it's also about how we communicate and guide, I think, uh, which uh, kind of managing expectations, I think, which is key in terms of uh, how these talk reacts. Okay. By the way, I just want to mention that the markets uh, are looking very good right now. So 180 points in the green on the Nifty and plenty of stocks hitting fresh highs. Infosys is once again at a fresh 52-week high, so don't lose sight of that. Actually, post the IT numbers, Infosys has been gaining quite a bit of ground. I mean, it's back above that 1600 level now. You have LNT, Lupin, Sun Pharma all sitting at fresh 52-week highs as well. And something like a Godrej Properties too. Uh, Mahesh, hi, good morning. I wonder your thoughts on IT. The, you know, the sentiment is a bit mixed, right? I mean, numbers are not too bad for some of them, but commentary is not great either. Uh, as an investor, what do you do now? So the IT sector, I mean, this was this quarter was supposed to be a quarter where uh, you would probably have got a reset in terms of what kind of a growth you will see for the next fiscal year. And market was a bit worried that you will see uh, downgrades uh, to the growth expectations. But I think by and large, I think the commentary which has come in is that, A, while things are still kind of weak on the discretionary side, uh, it looks to have kind of bottoming out over here, right? Uh, even the uh, BFI sector, which has been the most impacted, uh, things uh, are looking at a bottom. So I think uh, this is a sector where uh, going forward, we're not expecting any kind of a large growth next year. Uh, expectation is around 8 to 9% kind of a growth compared to around 4, 5% growth in this uh, fiscal year. But uh, at the margin, I think things uh, would lock, lock, uh, look to improve uh, in the IT sector. And again, our view is that uh, US economy is not going to go into a deep recession. It will be a kind of a soft landing. And, uh, and I think uh, slowly and steadily, I think in the second half of next fiscal year is where you will see uh, discretionary spend starts to come back. Mm -hmm. 
right? And over a medium term, if I take a three-year view, I think the overall spend on digital and uh, the uh, cloud migration and AI-related spends, I think that would mean their growth could still be uh, reasonably good. So, uh, so while this sector is not really uh, cheap com compared to the long-term averages, but uh, looks to have bottomed out and uh, and can be a good contra buy. Actually, we we are uh, getting more constructive on the sector. We have been slightly underweight, but uh, if I take a two to three year view, the sector should probably again go back to around 10, 10, 11 percent double digit kind of a growth. And more importantly, I think the uh, companies have shown that there's a lot of resilience on the margin front. So the margins have actually uh, surprised mm. a bit, and and that's how they can drive a better bottom line growth. Even the top line growth is slightly sluggish. Mm. So then, how do you make sense of, uh, you know, the miss that we've seen from the likes of LTI Mindtree? Is that a company-specific issue or a one-off? If we do get such accidents in individual IT names, how would you read them? And considering that you are now turning constructive on the sector per se, would you up your uh, weightage on IT in your portfolio? Because stocks typically tend to perform ahead of the improvement in fundamentals. So I think there are always going to be company specific issues in terms of their clients. Uh, if a large client is kind of uh, downsizing, uh, you would see that impact on a company specific. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we if, if uh, overall, I think the company has got the right kind of a mix and uh, they're good on execution, then I think we will use that as an opportunity really to uh, look at some of those names. And so, uh, yeah, so uh, I think from, from here on, uh, we would... Uh, we would look to add these stocks in any kind of a decline and 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 uh, and increase our weightage again uh, here again i think it can still be kind of stock specific right uh, depending on how the companies have been able to uh, show show a growth and how the order uh, book how the order wins have been in the recent past because that will give visibility of growth in the uh, in the near to medium term Okay, by the way, a lot of stocks, India Mart is now up almost 6%. Uh, you have Oracle after the 30% gain uh, post numbers. Oracle is up another 5%, so putting on some weight there. And Hoodco is up almost about 8 odd percent. Big volume growth is what you're seeing. You know, there are many themes that are picking up now, Mahesh, whether it is, uh, you know, religious tourism, whether it is tourism in general. I mean, that entire travel space, aviation, etc., hotels. Uh, is this a space that you like or do you think that it, uh, the, the juice is all out in this sector? So again, this has seen it initially. It was more of an open up trade, and people thought that uh, okay, it would fall a peter out. But I think the hotel industry and uh, travel, I think there is uh, clearly uh, again a demand side, but more even on the supply side, uh, we are not seeing much supply coming in. So I think the supply demand imbalance okay would probably uh, ensure that it continues for a longer period of time because capacity coming, especially in the hotel space, it takes time, right? It takes at least uh, three to four years where you can see new capacity coming up. So I think uh, uh, both in the hotels and the uh, aviation side, we see a fairly reasonable uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, profitability. I think the uh, profitability or the uh, average ARRs in the hotel sector are at a higher level. But uh, we hope, uh, we expect this to sustain for a slightly longer period of time. So the valuations, I think in some of these space are already pricing in. So. Whatever earnings growth or volume growth one can expect, I think that's the kind of a return we could expect in this sector. Mm. Uh, you know, <clears throat> just a uh, few names here. Look at Oracle Financial Services, right? I mean, sharp move yesterday. It's moved once again to being the top volume traded gainer now. Uh, it's up 5%. Uh, so stocks at 68.31. Uh, so that's a, <clears throat> what, 35% move in two, today's the third day then uh, for this uh, one. Uh, you got Z, which started flat. I was ma making a mention is down two and a half percent, so it's uh, come off sharply. There are some reports, etc., which indicate that there is that Sony is holding a board meeting today uh, with, with regards to the merger, and maybe they'll take a call, etc. But uh, that's moved down. It moved up over the last two days, and of course, I mean uh, Dixon is the other one which we mentioned. Metro Brands is down five percent. We'll just be speaking with the company as well. In a bit, 1100, uh, 1155 is where Metro Brands is at uh, at this point in time. Mahesh, uh, right next to you is the budget ballot box. You want to give us any recommendations? You want to put in something? We'll take that box uh, to Delhi to the finance minister before the budget. By the way, you've got two budgets, right? So if something doesn't come in the first one, there's still a <laughs> chance with the second one. Yeah. Any expectation? It's a voting account. Right. 
No, really, I think uh, budget uh, in that sense, okay, I mean, uh, there are not much expectations which are there. If you look at the earlier budgets, also, right, we have seen there's nothing home, right? I think market, I think broadly, I think, uh, A, I think from a market perspective, I think we've seen that on the, uh, at least for mutual fund industry on the fixed income mm -hmm. side, we've seen the indexation benefit, okay, which was taken away. I think if you really want to propagate the bond market in India, then uh, I think there should be some kind of benefit given for long-term investors who come to the bond market, okay, through the mutual fund route. I think that uh, parity is somewhere I think one uh, would like to, because you've seen mm -hmm. since then the flows into the mutual fund industry, into the uh, fixed income space has kind of dried out. And it's very important if you're trying to build the uh, bond market and liquidity, and that's an area where I think we would like some kind of a relook into it. Okay. You want to write it down on that paper? There's one in front of you there. Maybe you want sure. to just write it down, a little bit of it down and then just pop it into that <laughs> Sure, box. sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I can do that. But I, I, I mean, it is a vote on, vote on account this time, but there's a full-blown right. budget in July, right? So right. whatever are your expectations, <laughs> yeah. hopefully the finance minister will listen to them and read them as we provide this ballot box to her. So, sure, sure. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Mahesh, for joining in. <laughs> Well, uh, that is our expectations from the budget and the budget ballot box, which, by the way, will be provided to you all across the city as well. So if you have any expectations from the budget this time or in July, feel free to uh, put your thoughts, your wish list into the budget ballot box as Mahesh is doing. And then perhaps, you know, we can take that to the finance minister as well.